That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about EO, which is, I believe, the 18th feature directed by Jerzy Skolomowski, uh, the Polish auteur, which premiered at the 2022 Cannes Film Festival in competition, where it was awarded the jury prize, which is like third place prize. Uh, it's being released courtesy of Janus Films in uh, New York on November 18th, 2022, uh, to roll out to LA on December 2nd, uh, and then probably select uh, art house theaters and other cities after that. This director has done a lot of movies. Oh yeah, he's and he's a favorite of mine. Do I don't name name ones I know. Well, I made you watch The Shout cuz that's probably my Oh, favorite. I did really like The Shout, my, which I always say is our my favorite episode of our podcast. It's called The Shout. That yeah, that's my favorite film of his Deep End I like as well. Uh, the, okay, I asked what movies I've seen. Uh well, I rarely have a an opportunity to talk about his film work, but uh, he did a great, I thought, a great adaptation of Nabokov's uh, King Queen Knave with Gina Lollobrigida. He took a, like, he had a very lengthy break from filmmaking from 1991 to 2008. He didn't direct anything. And then he married a woman named uh, Eva Pizakowska, and she's written his last four films, so which were Four Nights with Anna. Uh, Essential Killing with Vincent Gallo, which I highly recommend, really like that film, uh, and 11 Minutes uh, in 2015. And this is their fourth feature together, which is kind of a, a reconsideration, I think, of Robert Bresson's uh, classic 1966 film, Al Hussar Balthazar. Uh, I thought this movie was excellent. The basic story it's about a donkey, mm -hmm. a donkey named EO. Mm -hmm. Much like Eeyore. And when you told me about this movie, I was 100% sure it was a documentary about Captain EO, the Michael Jackson Disneyland attraction. <laughs> but no, it's about this donkey named EO. And we find that basically he's been repossessed from a circus. And then he's moved from one space, like from one owner to the next until the end when he's taken to a slaughterhouse and turned into salami. The end. <laughs> basically, yes. But the... I have I don't I have nothing but good things to say about it. Um, probably the first thing I would say is I think this movie is beautifully shot. Mm -hmm. And whenever I complain about a movie looking cheap or when I think about how I would want a movie to look, this would be the example I would give from now on. Okay. I, mean, I just loved how the nighttime scenes looked. There are some fantasy scenes that you can get into later. Um, daytimes. Just, it just looks perfect to me. It was shot by Mikhail Dymek, who uh, shot Pavel Polakowski's Cold War. He's obviously an expert cinematographer, but it's, it's beautiful and it's transfixing along with the score because uh, it's mostly dialogue free as we're kind of following the expressions of this donkey. And I think the personification of the donkey uh, and how it's shot is... It, I got quite emotional. There are, you know, just because I know people are sensitive to this. There, There's a scene where the donkey gets beat. There is talk it, of like the donkey. Well, you're supposed to say what the thing is where you say it. But there is like violence against animals. So, but. That happens off screen. But it's, you know, you hear the sounds of it. Yeah. Um, so, I, like, I just thought that was so well done. Mm -hmm. There's very little dialogue. We're just watching this donkey kind of make its way. And and whoever the donkey's kind of interacting with in frame kind of make, like, because you see the donkey observing ants. But also, you know, overall, I think, whereas the Bresson was about saintliness, this is more about kind of a, the modern state of Europe, at least, as he's kind of, uh, kind of a road trip movie, if you will, and how he's, uh, EO is yanked out of, Although he's a creature that's being uh, exploited, he's yanked out of the place that is the most beneficial for him. So it's really focused on this donkey, but there are humans uh, who are not connected except for the fact that they all sort of have interacted with this donkey. So the first is when he's at the circus, there's a young lady who cares for him and she loves him. And he seems to be very connected to her. Mm -hmm. And when he's taken away, she's very emotional. Then we see him end up at like a horse stable so there are all these like very beautiful big horses and then eo is just like the work donkey yeah he's a beast of burden he's yeah put to work then he gets transitioned to a what's next for him well he runs away from the horse 
That's right. Situation. Oh, then he ends up at a, like a place where, uh, like fox fur is acquired. And so we see EO like dragging, like the handler is killing these foxes and putting them on the, like EO's little cart. And EO is with, like the way it's shot is like that EO is aware of what's happening. And so he kicks this man, the handler in the head and presumably kills him. So then EO is sent off again. And the truck driver who picks him up along with other animals. But before that, he's working on some farm and Cassandra slash Magda comes to visit him for his birthday. Right. So then the truck driver who picks him up after killing the handler this guy's kind of like an interesting character. He's listening to death metal. And then there's a scene where he stops at a truck stop. And we see him take a shower and get cleaned up, get food. And then as he's leaving this truck stop, because, you know, you have to walk kind of through the gas station. It's like a long walk to where the big trucks park. And as he's walking, we see this, like, what looks like a homeless woman following him. And he offers her some of his food. And then invites her to go to his truck. And that's kind of a fun scene. And then he kind of says, like, like he gives her food. She takes it, offers her some champagne, I think, and then says, oh, now we can have sex. And she runs away. And then we hear him saying, like, oh, I was just kidding. And then all of a sudden, someone, like, opens his truck door and slits his throat. Mm -hmm. So there's a crime scene. And then we see that some young guy's car is broken down near the truck stop. And the police have all rem have removed all of the animals from the truck so EO is tied to like a light post and this young guy is this, do you know who this actor is uh no he he's playing in Italian though he sees EO and takes him home and his character is supposed to be kind of like a rich kid who makes poor decisions and he was it looks like he was uh studying to be a priest and has been kicked out of school so he goes to his stepmother's house and his stepmother is played by Isabelle Huppert mm -hmm. and she lives in this beautiful home and EO is brought to this home and we see that Isabelle Huppert is sort of having like an like a romantic relationship with her stepson there's a there's an edit that I think is perfect for signifying their relationship but yeah and then we see EO leave that mm-hmm and then he's picked up and taken to like a slaughterhouse and that's where his life ends. But I just thought this movie was really like, it made me feel a lot of things because the story is, is very basic relating to the donkey and then these sort of uh, tangential human characters. I thought the film does a really good job of giving us, while it's only giving us very little time with these human characters, I feel like they had big stories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is hard to do. I think it's hard to do. And, and I think, you know, EO is also meta, a metaphor in several ways, like where he is in the hierarchy of nature. Like, uh, the, you know, compared to how he's prized over, or how horses are prized over him versus dogs and how he also kind of blends into the background. And there's nobody that's looking out for him. Like nobody, nobody presumably cares about this donkey. At one point... EO's like walking around this like city center and there's no one there. It's like totally abandoned, which was weird. Mm -hmm. And then some firefighters see him, pick him up. Even that scene too is like, what is a donkey? Because the woman says, don't scare him. It's just a donkey. Just grab him. <laughs> yeah, because the male firefighter is being like, he's like, he has like a rope and he thinks like the donkey's going to attack him like a lion. And the woman's like, it's a donkey. Like just walk up to it and be nice. And then they tie it to the fire truck and lead it somewhere and that somewhere is like a soccer game. So they make a pit stop at a soccer field. Mm -hmm. And there's a soccer match that's very high energy. And some guy's like, somebody's tied you up. I'm, and unties him and goes, anarchy's great. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the firefighter team wins their soccer match. And they have this big party at like, an, uh, like, like a bar. And they bring EO with them. And then the losing team shows up and like beats up all of the soccer players who won. And EO has escaped from the party, which I thought was funny. Mm -hmm. And then poor EO is out in the field just like looking on. And then those like hoodlums. The rival team. The rival team says, let's fuck up the donkey. And then they beat EO with like baseball bats. So then EO ends up in like the veterinary hospital. But getting back to how it made me feel, I just thought like EO is like this entity, the, the, this being sort of going through life and never really fitting in and... And can't even be allowed to be alone in nature when he escapes to it because he's just... 
Yeah, there's a really yeah. interesting scene where one... Because he escapes, like... EO stays on the run. Like, he's always escaping. And there's one moment when we see him, it turns into, like, a sort of a dark fable where mm-hmm. he goes into, like, this graveyard at night and there are creatures watching him. We see spiders and an owl. And then he ends up in this, like, dark tunnel. And it almost looks like there are eyes watching him. Mm-hmm. I thought that was very and well done. A gra- I'm assuming from a drone shot where everything's bathed in red. And uh-huh. it's following this river and it, it's it's hypnotizing um the, oh there's a scene where there are lasers being shot kind of like jennifer lopez is waiting for tonight video and we find out that they're like for scopes on a gun mm-hmm. and then I like hunters a, a are shooting shot and i think it's a fox or a wolf or something i think it's a wolf because we see the wolf howling anyway someone's hunting animals and eo comes across the animal that's been shot that was very interesting but what i was going to say is it may like i feel like e- the representation of this donkey, it made me feel like how we can go through life alone and overlooked and unloved or it, like, like at times. And, and, and that can just be it. Like his life just ended. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, I thought it was very sad and moving, which is so remarkable considering that the bulk of the film is us just watching this donkey walk around. Mm-hmm. Um, the Polish guy that gets a slow thread that slow, Throat slit. Throat slit. Uh, Matusz Kaszakowicz, uh, he's in quite a few Polish film productions. He was in Skolomowski's 11 Minutes, which is a film that does that thing where it's got all these intersecting characters that all unite for this one grand moment. But it is a very grand moment. I love the last like five minutes of that film. Uh, but he's also in a couple Malgorzata Szumowska films I like, including Mug and a gay film she did called In the Name of in 2013. Uh, and then, of course, Uper. I, I knew she was, uh, before seeing it again, I knew she was in it. But I remember at the premiere, there was a gasp because no Well, the really first knew. time we see her, so first of all, her stepson is very handsome and he is like dressed in like, uh, like a priest robe mm-hmm. and he's giving whatever priests give with the water and the thing. Mm-hmm. And then we turn the camera to Isabel and she's sort of like sitting watching him and the way she's lit is perfect. She, she looks, looks fantastic, perfect. Yeah. Her makeup is per. I mean, she looks fantastic. And then she gets up and walks away after she gets a phone call that he's done something wrong. The woman tending her is her real life daughter, Lolita, Lolita Chama. And who, which made me think that their relationship is probably very much like that in real life. Like she's like, uh, her Gen- assistant. Jennifer Lewis and Jackie's back and Lolita's oh. en- entendre. Um, yeah, I, I mean, Isabel's kind of the perfect way to end the film. Mm-hmm. Uh, and even though her role is, you know, she's not on screen for very long, I think the story that she's involved in it, is, like, so interesting. Mm-hmm. It makes uh, an immediate impression. And, of course, she gets to do something lavish by destroying a bunch of... Uh... There's a scene where she gets upset because her stepson is, like, he just thinks she's always going to bail him out. And she says, well, this time I'm not because I sold this house. But you're also family. This is also your home. So why don't you take some of these things? And she starts tearing She's up all the shit. Busting the crockery and throwing cutlery. And then he goes in to give her a kiss. And, yeah, it was very good. Uh, and then the end, of, I just rewatched Joseph Losey's Mr. Klein. And uh, the final scene of EO where he's being rounded up with these cows, he's the only one of his kind, made me feel like Elaine Delon in that film in the depiction of the Valdiv roundup. In, in France in 1942, it felt very much like that leading, that shoving this person along in the slaughter, even though ostensibly they shouldn't be there. As, before, as, and should any of them, right? Before that scene, there's we get a shot of like water crashing against like a shore that I thought was so beautiful. Where it looks like it's in reverse. Yes, mm-hmm. and like there are patterns and then it sort of dissipates. Mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, that could, I would buy that like visual on a screen on loop. Like well, was, and, and then the score, uh, again, as well, is so... It, it, and it, it, even the sounds as he's being led to his death and the screen goes black, I, I don't know. I, there was a really cute scene, uh, just for some levity, of uh, EO gets taken to like a community center opening... <laughs> And he's just chilling. Aww. He's just chilling outside, and they made him a necklace, a necklace out of, of carrots. carrots. And we see him eating his necklace. I thought that was really. And cute. that's when you know he's depressed because he's stuck on that one farm, and that lady's trying to give him a carrot, and he won't eat it. Yeah. What would you give this movie? Four out of five. I would give it four out of five. I thought it was excellent. And it's just you know because I think that you 
weren't aware of Skolomowski, this being another film of his, but for a man in his 80s, you uh, know... Well, you know, I thought that whoever made this film was a younger person. So when you said this man is in his 80s, I was very surprised because it feels so fresh and, you know... Vibrant. Vibrant. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say innovative, but I mean, it definitely feels... It just feels very clean and... Yeah, so good job. Mm -hmm. This uh, Yerzy... Mm -hmm. lives in LA he does I think he has a place in Malibu if email that's right. me I would go for coffee he's been here like 20 years but uh, <laughs> yeah definitely one of the most uh, uh, you know one of the best directors of all time arguably and also obviously one of the best uh, Polish filmmakers of all time you know I think he scripted Knife in the Water with Polanski and he's written another film with Polanski The Palace which is supposedly coming out sometime in 2023 anything else? no Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye.